Now, um, some people were asking me what is the program following now. We have three uh, lectures presentations right now, one by Hans Ibelings. I know a lot of students are here to see him. Then Ahmed Hadrovic, uh, Dean of the Faculty of Architecture. Finally, Green Design by Marcel Vroom. Uh, all of these lectures will take about 20 to 30 minutes. The drinks are after. Uh, so now, I'd like to uh, introduce Hans Ebelings. Uh, he is the editor of the A10 magazine for architecture in Europe, including this region which fascinates him. And he has just edited a book which will uh, be published in November. Restart, it's called, and it's about recent post-war architecture in Bosnia-Herzegovina. He'll tell us all about it. Um, um, yeah. First of all, thank you very much uh, for having me here and giving me the opportunity to say something um, on this occasion. First of all, I would like to use this opportunity to congratulate the Sarajevo Green Design Festival with their second version, so uh, very nice. I think there is always uh, a need for exchange, a need for uh, uh, creating possibilities for contact. And uh, in that sense, it's almost ironic that uh, Chris, our moderator today, Chris Keulemans, and I are living in the same city. And we had to come all the way to Sarajevo to meet for the first time. So that shows that it really works. It's this creating uh, the possibility for exchange. Second thing I would like to do is to say something about the book I've been editing uh, on the invitation of the Association of Architects in Bosnia-Herzegovina um, to make a selection of architecture produced between 1995 and 2010. By asking me, I think the Association has showed a very open-minded attitude, which I really appreciate. I'm of course honored that I was asked to do this, uh, but it shows that there is an interest to uh, invite someone with a critical eye of an outsider uh, to assess the quality of contemporary architecture here in Bosnia Herzegovina on an international, uh, in an international perspective. As an editor of A10, and this is the third thing I want to do, show the magazine, because I'm the editor-in-chief and I always take the opportunity to promote it a little bit. Uh, as the editor of A10, I have not, let's say, a complete overview of development in Europe today, but at least I have an impression of what's going on. The magazine started six, six and a half years ago with the intention to cover what's not covered by most other magazines, namely the architecture of Central and Eastern Europe. And our intention is to give an international platform for architecture in this part of the continent. Um, and in a way, in the last six years, the magazine has been witnessing the changes in European architecture. And this project for the book, Restart, which will appear mid-November, is um, kind of, will be the book and the presentation of the material which I selected, enabled me to extend my knowledge and understanding of architecture in this region, which until quite recently was only covered by our correspondent here, Elsa Turkusic, uh, who is a correspondent for A10. Because that's another thing which I would like to stress. Uh, while most magazines are based on the information they receive through press releases and other publications, we really insist on having our network of correspondents. So in total, we have about 75 people uh, working for the magazine in every uh, part of Europe. Um, for me, this project adds to my professional experience in the region in, with activities in uh, Slovenia, Croatia, and Serbia. And I would like to stress that it's a professional um, activity because I also have this experience as a tourist on the Adriatic coast, which is another layer of, let's say, understanding the context. And I'm, I'm stressing this, this aspect of tourism because there's always a danger to be as a critic arriving from somewhere, be here for a short while, that uh, you are acting as a tourist. That there is always the danger that you are superficial and also that you're looking for what you are 
already expecting. I'm fully aware of this limitation, uh, which I have because I'm not an insider, um, and I hope that being aware of these limitations has helped me to avoid some of the pitfalls. So I tried to open myself for the work that was uh, sent in by architects in Bosnia-Herzegovina, uh, all in all, almost 400 projects, and I tried to look at them without any preconception of what I could expect or what I wanted to see. And going through the text and images, I made my choice, which, in which I tried to reconcile several considerations. Firstly, I wanted to make a generous um, selection of works that stands out in a positive sense because of the architectural quality and the cultural and social ambitions of it. In many countries in Southern Europe, and this is not except, no exception, there exists alongside the formal official architecture a parallel universe of mostly semi-legal uh, informal architecture. And this sometimes deserve, receives more attention, this parallel universe, than the, let's say, official um, architecture. And the book Restart, which will be there in November, is, according to me, a fitting counterweight to this one-sided attention for um, a form of architecture that one architectural critic in the Netherlands recently described as, um, which lends itself for intellectual disaster tourism. A perverse form of entertainment whereby you get to stare at things, uh, you get to stare all you want at other people's misery without having to be confronted with it on a daily basis. So I try to avoid that because I believe that the architecture of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Balkans in general, deserves a more serious interest than this postmodern cultural relativism uh, perpetrated by the so-called uh, Balkanology. And secondly, what I tried within the selection is to find uh, interconnections so that the presentation in the book will be more than a mere succession of individual projects. And I've tried to discover and apply a sense of coherence by grouping the projects and arranging them under the same heading. No projects were rejected because they did not fit in any category. Um, at most, some were excluded because the category already contained related or similar projects that I found more convincing. And so according to me, the selected project reveal a panorama of contemporary architecture in Bosnia and Herzegovina and indirectly what they stand for in terms of society and community. In other words, how architecture is helping to shape post-war Bosnia and Herzegovina, which can be seen as a totem pro parte for the themes that are addressed in the book, identity, community, privacy, and society. And every arrangement of a critic uh, applies to, uh, every arrangement a critic applies to contemporary or very recent phenomena can only be a provisional snapshot. And I'm fully aware of this, that it's not the end score of anything, but only the half-time score that I'm able to show. But having said that, I think, or at least I hope, that this selection gives an impression of the merits of post-war architecture culture. A culture that in many respects had to begin all over again, had to pick up the thread, uh, break new ground, and has gone, has done this in a very intriguing manner. And the variety it's the variety which makes this culture interesting, according to me. And that's not a way of avoiding or evading, uh, uh, to be precise, because I really think that what within this variety emerges as a common image is at best described as a mixture. Um, typically, in the selection, there are only few projects that adopt a radical position, a radical in form or radical in concept. There's a lot of architecture in this country that goes, uh, there's not a lot of architecture that goes to extremes, that seeks out the limits of architecture. And the simple explanation might be that the means and conditions for that are not here, or at any rate, not yet. But I sense that it could also have deeper roots, because all mixtures here tend to be harmonious rather than rich in contrast. And although it would be a gross generalization to apply this to all uh, work of each individual, it is what strikes me most about architecture in recent years in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It underscores the extent to which architects here go their own way, and they are only partially in step with international trends and tendencies. In many European countries, architecture is above all more of the same. 
and without wishing to speak in terms of exotism, this is not really the case in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Here too, of course, there are uh, good and bad uh, imitators of international fashions, but most architects seem, in defiance of all dominant trends, to express their own view, to articulate their own world. And because of this, it's possible to find buildings and projects here that are quite unlike what's happening elsewhere. And in the age of globalization and homogenization, I think this is not an insignificant merit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hans. Nice to meet you in Sarajevo.